Hello, welcome to UMD Media Show. Today we start the H panel with a new topic. Wrecked Destiny, the trajectory of Abiy Ahmed's Ethiopia is the topic for today. And I'm joined by Mogus Zawdu Teshoma from Vienna, Nati Brahani Fru from East Coast, Tahlega Rumkel from Sweden. Welcome, gentlemen. It's great to have you back. Nati, actually, this is your first time to be on the H panel. Tahla, you are now almost uh, part of the team on a regular basis. Mogus Zawdu, you have been to twice or two, three times to the H panel. So we'll start as usual with the highlight of the week, uh, what each panelist is think in terms of what stood out for you over the past seven days. Morgan, we, we may start with you. What, what is the highlight for you? Of course, other than the topic we'll be talking about as a main topic. All right, thank you very much, uh, Getacho. It has always been a pleasure to be on H panel and uh, Today would be also very special because this is my first time to uh, uh, to share the panel with uh, Taklai and uh, Nati. So it's, thank you very much. And it, I'm glad that we are having this uh, H panel today together. Uh, with that, I mean, in Ethiopia, it is always very difficult, as you all know, that uh, we have um, our daily dose of agendas, um, flurry of agendas. So. It's difficult to pick which one stands out, but as far as I'm concerned, one of the issues which um, caught my attention was the uh, the release of the new movie um, for, for the love or for the hate of, of, of the motherland is uh, mind boggling for me when we are still deeply embroiled in um, Recycling narratives of of, of of warmongering, hate speech, and uh, also, um, in a sense, not learning from our past mistake, um, actually from the most recent uh, mistakes and what we have undergone over the last two and three years. So that is one of the issues. And I think uh, the panelists know what I'm talking about, but generally for those people who are not aware of what I'm talking about is uh, this movie by um, a notorious guy, um, artist, uh, his name is Theodros Tsushoma, came up with a new movie um, film which honors the, uh, the bravery um, of, of the Ethiopian, um, supposedly Ethiopian uh, National Defense Force in, in relation to uh, the uh, the uh, Tigray uh, civil war, and I found it uh, very uh, condescending, and it only serves perpetuating the narrative of war. So that is one of the things. And the other one is, uh, um, if though it's not so surprising for me, um, the lecture and uh, preaching that the prime minister has been holding with. Uh, different sectors of the community, um, most importantly with um, religious leaders. Um, again, it shows actually where we are heading to. In the midst of multifaceted crisis, he is, is still in his own alternative world where he's trying to um, um, convey, I don't say the political message, but somehow engaging in a performative um, politics by diverting the most pressing issues um, at home front. So this is the second issue, uh, Getacho. And maybe finally, um, I also um, came across a speech by, um, again, the infamous uh, Shumalis Abdisa, um, fanning the flame of uh, ethnic hatred, where he said that um, now we are back again in the uh, politics of revenge. Basically, he was saying that the Oromos, in his own uh, understanding, have been evicted. So it is time to rebuild better, which means um, it's basically the politics of, 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 of vengeance, where, which partly explains what they are doing even to uh, the, re the redevelopment and uh, 
dislocation of the community in, a, in, its, in, its, in its environment. So these are some of the uh, issues which uh, stood out for me, Getacho, even though I, I just picked them randomly. Thank you, Morgus, uh, for that. Uh, yes, uh, the uh, movie you mentioned, uh, actually it was uh, maybe even scripted um, and uh, sponsored it's a uh, public knowledge now the prime minister including the chief of staff uh, were the uh, those who scripted and managed the project and uh, it's it's now uh, uh, a movie that is being discussed uh, across the board in terms of the implication of it and uh, what the narrative is and so on and Nati again welcome uh, this is uh, uh, it's great pleasure to have you here. Uh, the format is we start with what stood out for each panelist. So what is the highlight for you in terms of the past week? Thank you so much for having me, Gitch. Um, yeah, the, the first one for me was the discussion that the prime minister has been having uh, with different sections of the society. Uh, I don't actually very much like no listening to him uh because it is very much repeatedly uh the same thing the same hubris the same bravado all the time what stood out for me uh in there is the the discussion that he had with um representatives of tigray i'm sure you have seen what i had to say uh about about that uh and the the, the answers that he had for the questions that he's been um, ask, for example, about uh, Eritreans occupying a, a certain portion of a country that he's leading. His response, I found it to be very disgraceful. Uh, and it kind of made me lose hope uh, that any remorse uh, would come out of him or his supporters whatsoever any longer. Uh, the response that he had is not a kind of response that a leader of a country would give when they're told that a portion of a country that they're leading is occupied by foreign powers. Uh, he said that if there, if, if that happens, if it is true, I'm going to be constituting a committee uh, and, and we'll see what's going to happen and that is that is a very disgraceful response but other than that i i haven't given any any weight to any of the discussions that he had with anybody else uh because it's the same repetitious uh the same thing that we've been we've been hearing for the last few years uh th the second one um that caught my attention was the demolition of sections of particularly at Addis Ababa. I have very mixed feelings about that. Those sections, especially the red, the red light districts, uh, they have been there for a very, very long time and they, they, there needs to be certain kind of uh, development in there. They, they can't be staying like that forever. But the way it's being done, uh, I don't believe that it is in the interest of the people who needed to be helped, whose life need to be improved. Uh, in fact, it will deprive uh, them a kind of livelihood that that they should, they, they deserve. But other than that, I, I I don't have any problem with developments, and as long as it's uh, it's getting done right, that has caught the attention not only mine but a lot of international media right now i remember that bloomberg had to write something about it i read it this morning it was it was a very interesting article and even uh people who are keen on uh following ethiopia but very much objective uh do understand that a, a certain a certain type of development needs to be done but it needs to be done correctly uh, the other one, uh, the third one that caught my attention is insurgents, especially Fano, uh, OLF, the OLA, to me, from uh, the, the news that, that are coming out recently, 
uh, it does look like um, that they are at the end of the road. They are losing their commanders. They are um, totally in disarray, especially if Anno does not have a political leadership. It, it, its movement is just based on hate uh, and revenge. We're, we're going to be talking about uh, what the road is going to be for them. Um, you know, uh, throughout the discussion, but I don't, I don't think that I, I think their their insurgency is coming to the end. Uh, so that's that's what caught my attention. Thank you, Nati, uh, for that. Uh, yes, uh, we'll touch some of these elements in the main topic. Taglai again, uh, welcome. Uh, today you are joined uh, by other by Morgus, who is also on the same time zone. So thank you for doing that again after midnight almost. Uh, again, what's the highlight for you, Tatlai? Um, if I can get that, you give me a signal if, if you could hear me because I'm happy having. Yes. yes. All right. Um, I don't think I have, I have much to, to add to what Mogus and um, Nati have already said. Um, I, I think generally one problem when, when you speak about highlights is, uh, from Ethiopia is that a lot of things happen that you don't really know um, where, where to focus because there is there is a, the, the amount of stuff that happens is just extraordinary. Um, but just to to to, um, to point out, out some of them, I think one has to do with um, with the condition of IDPs in in, in Tigray, and it looks like that the Tigray interim administration and the Abiy Ahmed regime have agreed uh, to to make a, a show of returning some IDPs to, to Western Tigray and to Raya without uh, creating the condition for, for their safety return. So they will return to the very people who had um, hounded them out in, in the first place. So I don't know how that is going to, to work in practice, but that seems to be the agreement that they have reached, that some IDP people will be sent to Western Tigray and to Raya. They will do some photo op and they will pretend that they have ticked that box because they have their Pretoria agreement to, to, um, to pay attention to because they're the Americans and the, the, other, um, uh, the other sort of um, um, entities in charge of overseeing the implementation of the agreement are pushing them to implement the agreement. And that seems to be one agreement that they have reached. Um, on, and that's, it's, it's very, very bizarre. It's bizarre that they would ask people to go to places where they are for sure uh, they wouldn't feel um, secure. Um, the other thing I think, um, I know that Nati is saying that the insurgency in, in Amhara is not going anywhere, uh, but there were two uh, big events. Um, one was that um, a high profile final commander uh, was killed. I don't know if it was um, within the, 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 the space of the, the past week or it's been two weeks, but not, not uh, in the distance uh, past. And um, again, allegedly, the final have also killed a high-profile ANDF uh, commander. But so it seems to me that it's actually escalating. But at any rate, the fact that there is war in Amhara and there is war in Oromia, everybody is pretending that everything is all right. That the fact that war has become a fact of life in Ethiopia, that always worries me. It's it's it's, it's, it's something that has become accepted. I mean, Ali Ahmed actually doesn't even want to mention that there is war in Amhara or in Oromia. It's, it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's um, a background music to everything else. So it's supposed to be happening all the time. And you just uh, we're just supposed to, to accept it as a fact of life. And the other thing, again, it's, it's, not, a, it's a new, not a new thing, and Fan has mentioned it, is uh, the condition of the demolition of buildings in Amsar. And uh, interestingly, actually, um, I'm mean, having a meeting with the uh, with the so-called loyal taxpayers, and one of them asked him why they were doing the demolition without giving prior warning. And how he said that we should harden our hearts if we want to change. Uh, that is something that we should do, and people shouldn't make a, a big fuss out of it. And I, I thought that was a extraordinary display of how he how um, cold-hearted and sociopathic he might say um, Abi is. So those would be the uh, what I would highlight for now. Thank you, Tarlai. I think that's a good uh, segue into the topic as well. So, uh, Red Destiny, the trusted history of Abiy Ahmed's Ethiopia. This is uh, based on an article 
that was published uh, on Horn Horizon, uh, those are RG, but unfortunately, at least uh, until this point, for the past uh, few hours, the uh, website seems to be compromised. We have confirmed that with the uh, editor of that website as well. But the uh, title of that article, uh, it's a note from um, an insider's perspective, if you will, uh, the person who wrote that, he is part of the Oromo uh, PP, Oromo Property Party senior leaders uh, leadership. And he wrote Ethiopia's perilous path, assessing the political landscape under Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. And there are sections that deal with the uh, maneuvers and how uh, Abi maintains his power and the last section of the article deals with what the author of that article thinks in terms of how the future might unfold. He talks about how uh, he might, Abi might consolidate his power and the war in Ethiopia, in Tugray might re be renewed again. And he talks as well about war everywhere. And then the last scenario he talks about in that article is about um, a revolt might come in uh, within the ruling party uh, from perhaps from the military or close uh, this closest to the prime minister. So Takla, maybe get us started there. What is new or what did you see in that article that we didn't know? Uh, or if you just general share with us your take of that article. You, you are muted, Dalai. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, can we can hear you, yeah. All right. Yeah, so one of the things that I found um, interesting, and it's not something maybe relevant, is how lucid and how well written the, the article is. And I was surprised that the, the Oromo PP has someone who have that ability uh, within its ranks. And the natural question is if, you know, this individual who seems to have a, uh, a good understanding of what is happening, and he seems to be someone who has reached at the conclusion that Abi is a dictator, and that is someone who is taking the country in the wrong direction, you wonder why he's still there in the party, because naturally you would expect um, that, that individual to, 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 to move on. Uh, but in the introduction, he says, I think he's a member of the Alamo PP. So um, something that's quite um, adapted to me. But I, I found it interesting that the, the, the writing is so um, lucid. Um, in terms of any new information for, for me, nothing really. I mean, I, I mean it's, it's, it's actually, you need only five seconds of, um, of studying to, to understand how he operates. And it was enough for me. Uh, to um, that hilarious interview we did in 2018, if you remember, where he pretended to be interviewed by, by a lady, when actually what happened was they had prepared a script and a machine was reading off, um, writing off the questions of reading a script, and he was giving commentary on geopolitics, on global geopolitics, um, which turned out that he was actually plagiarizing from Henry Kissinger and other notable personalities. That shows you the, the length to which Abiy would go to, to make a point, to, to show to people that he's capable. And that was enough for me to, to tell me everything that I needed to know about Abiy, that he was a fraud, that he would go to any length to, uh, to achieve his, um, his goal, uh, that he was ruthless. And it is this point that the, 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 the author of the article that makes, he, he, he tells us that he uses and throws people um, left and right. He mentioned the case of Lemma, the case of Andargacho, the case of a lot of other people who are being used and, and dumped when they were no longer um, important for, for, for him. Um, he tells us about how Makigelin um, Abi is. He mentioned the, the example that he allegedly mentioned in his book, um, which I think in, in Amharic is called a cabinet member, which is Strap and um, stirrup and throne, or something like that. In English rendition would be, um, and how how calculating and how ruthless and how Machiavellian Abiy is, um, and he the, the author tells us that Abiy has been a disaster. He mentioned the the, the the number of people killed in the Tigray War, uh, close to a million, 
Um, we don't know the number of people who will have been killed in the Amhara region in Oromia. And the interesting point actually is, 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 is it's always good when somebody gives you the big picture. He tells us that the number of people killed um, under Abu's watch from exceeding the number of uh, people killed in the entire history of Ethiopia until 2018. So if you put it that one, actually, you, it shows you in stark um, picture how, how devastating Abi has been for, for, um, for Ethiopia. Um, in terms of the, the, the scenarios, one of the scenarios that he mentions, if the Amharas and the Tigrans might form an alliance and rise up um, against Abi, um, is that likely to happen? I'm not sure, uh, because again, because of how how difficult that he has made for for the Amparas and for the Tigrans to work together, would they go past that um, artificial wall that Abi has erected, and would they work together? I I I, I take doubt to to believe that. I I'm not sure about that. Um, the other scenario that he mentioned is the Hamarim um, part, where Abi you would come to realize that he is not the material Ethiopia and he would resign. Um, I think that is very, everybody knows that is very unlikely. I mean, he doesn't have the self-awareness and humility that um, Haile Mariam had. So there's no way that I mean, you would come around to the conclusion that he's wrong, but um, capable of leading Ethiopia and he would he should make way for, for, other, um, for another leader. I don't see that happen. Um, and actually, you know, one of the um, one of the points that Abi always makes is that he has sort of divine authority, and some of them believe that they are divinely ordained to lead. Don't conclude that they are all of a sudden than the wrong person, because that would be in direct contradiction to that belief. Um, the other scenario that he mentions is a revolt within the party. Um, I think one interesting point. He makes in the, in the article that the way Abi maintains power is by using a there's an incentive system apparently where people he pays off people to to serve him, but because there is only so much that he could pay, at some point he would run out of resources, and that could create enough number of disgruntled people within the party, and they might rise up against Abi and they might topple him. Again, it is something that will happen any any time soon. I'm not sure about that, but that is actually the, the only way I could see Abi um, being removed from from power. Thank you, Tahlai. Uh, there were repeated uh, comments from our audience in terms of your mic. I think uh, uh, it's good. To, uh, I hope for the next round, if you can uh, make it better, uh, Tahlai. Uh, Okay, Nati, um, you were smiling when uh, Tarlai was saying um, it's easy for uh, to know if uh, you watch something about Abi, you would conclude the same thing that what the uh, Duga, I think the the pen name he have uh, in that article is Duga Wagawaya with uh, a PP uh, or Romo PP senior leader. So, what is your take of the article? Maybe. Maybe if I, if I can help you with the pro pronunciation, it is Luga Wagwaya. Luga Wagwaya. Thank you, Mongus. Uh, so uh, that is, uh, he's not, of course, he's not, it's not his real name. And Nati, what's, what's your take uh, of the article? Well, I, I was smiling when Teklai was uh, saying that because I intend to agree with almost everything that he had to say. Um, my opinion, the article, does not have much information. Uh, there was not many of us, uh, quite a handful of us warned uh, based on suspicion of uh, dangerous and unusually and, and uh, sinister behavior of the new uh, the bosses in town as soon as they uh, ascended to power. So it sh this shouldn't be very much uh, the behavior of, of the prime minister and, and a lot of people that were around him uh, should not be surprised for uh, for a lot of people, even though they have uh, realized it or they just woke up to it very late. Uh, when we hear 
you know, the president Oromia caught on tape saying that, uh, you know, there needs to be confusing and convincing of, of people. We, a lot of people should have woken up then. When we hear, uh, you know, a heavy injection of fringe religious uh, philosophy into day-to-day -day politics, we should have woken up there. A lot of people should have, should have woken up then. Uh, when we hear just not only the prime minister, but uh, artists, political, religious, academic, media elites say, uh, let's eat them and be blessed before they eat us. That's word for word. Accusing an entire ethnic group for assassination attempt of the prime minister, that's when we should have woken up. So uh, if this article, I'm not sure if, 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 if would have been beneficial if it was written then. And uh, this is how they are. This is what they do. The, the prime minister has written a book as it's been mentioned in, uh, in the article about how to acquire power, right? Those who understood that should have stood up to him. They didn't. A lot of people were so euphoric for so many reasons, so, for so many reasons, and a chunk of it is hate. So right now, I think uh, the article is, I, I do believe it's, uh, it benefits some people who didn't wake up to, to have them uh, waken up. Uh, it can be used, it can be a tool uh, for that, but for many of us, for you, for, for Mogus, for Teklai, uh, I, you know, it, it's, it's something that we've, we've already known. How to deal with it from now is something that we need to, we need to talk about instead of uh, treating this as something, a new phenomenon that people didn't know or people uh, should have known about. A lot of people did know about it, but their, their judgment was very much clouded by hate their judgment is very much clouded by euphoria. Uh, and that euphoria actually came from not because they were ignorant, not because they were naive, but because they wanted a revenge against a certain group of people, against a certain group of political uh, political group to take a revenge. Uh, you know, their, their euphoria came out of that. Uh, I, I, I do believe that because a lot of people who celebrated uh, the, the ascension of Abi were not people who uh, did not get benefit out of uh, the, the, the government that, that preceded him. A lot of people were actually members of that, that very government, but for many reasons, for myriad of reasons, they thought they could use Abi as a tool to get revenge against. I, I don't care if they if they uh, get a revenge against against political actors. What burns me is they took they took that out on people. They took that out on people of the grind, particularly. They took that out of a chunk of people in Amhara region. They took that out of a chunk of people, a, a very large number of people in Oromia. That's what burns me. So I, I don't believe that um, naivete has a lot to do with it, even though there's a little bit of that. But I think our discussion should continue as what to do after now. That's, that's how I saw it. Thank you, Nati. Uh, going, uh, coming back to you, Morgas. I know you would uh, agree that on the same level. This is not nothing new, but for those, I mean, you'll you'll share with us your take. But for those who would say, but this is coming from an insider at that level, 
isn't it by itself um, you know a new thing given that in the article lemma is mentioned he's out he never spoke about that uh, now um, gadu is out he never spoke about that Maybe other other people who even left the country, they never talk about this. So what is your take overall, Mogas? Um, thank you, Getacho. You you uh, actually strike into the heart of uh, the issue I'm going to address. So one of the things would be uh, the fact that this article was written, even though much of it is not um, quite revealing, as um, I could say. So it is the rehashing the evolution, generally the trajectory of what Abi has been doing, for example, to consolidate power um, and the state of the, uh, the, the politics um, as we see now and what went wrong maybe in terms of uh, the decision making process and etc. But the most important thing is I will come to um, maybe the most I would pick three aspects of this article. One is the fact that this insider uh, with a pseudonym, with a pen name, has somehow, um, his article could be used as a, as a constant reminder. So even though we know it, it is, it is still better that we have a constant reminder. So where we are, because we tend to forget things, so it's still useful to serve um, uh, as a reminder. So that's one of the things. But in terms of the behavior of Abi, in this article, you could see what Abi is capable of. First and foremost, he's a con artist. So in this article, you can see that Abi is a con artist. And so it tells you, even though it's not revealing, that the behavior of Abi, the identity of Abi is. Um, what many of us have uh, pointed out early on, but still it is relevant in terms of uh, confirmatory. Um, I could say it is confirmatory, not revealing, but it's confirmatory. Um, the other issue is um, this um, writer was claiming, and rightly so, that what the country has experienced in general, from north to south, east to west, including the center, is quite unprecedented and I, I i i i i agree with that even if you remember uh, i think most of you have um, uh, watched uh, the latest interview by Johar mohammed on the on, on, on the eve of the first the new year he also exactly said the same thing he even said that the oromo people has never experienced it, um this level of atrocity um, both in terms of, 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 of the quantity and, uh, and, and it, it, it's, 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 it, it, it's feature. So, so that's true that Abi is very capable in terms of um, distraction. I, I think that, that, that that's very good. We have to give credit uh, where it is due, even though it's not uh, um, quite revealing. That's the second thing. But when we come to um, the possible scenarios, I was expecting that the writer would expand on it. So why, why it is likely or less likely and what would be the challenges, for example, when we talk about the possible um, coalition between the, the, the Amara, for example, the Amara and the Tigray people or the Tigray political group or even elites, um, there is nothing in there about the challenges and the possibilities. Um, the same goes uh, for 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 other um, scenarios, we can we can discuss about that. Um, the other issue is he was saying that Abi is going to uh, consolidate his power. I would say he he has already consolidated his power. We could say he might have said he could further consolidate his power, or cement his power, or become uh, a necked um, auto, uh, autocrat or dictator. But I, I would say that Abi has, um, has been, um, has consolidated his power long ago, probably a year or so, um, when we um, could no longer see any of those, the, um, the mastermind of the change or the Oromara coalition. For example, Gerdu and Dargacho is not there, Lama is not there, um, even Johar is not there. Literally, almost all the people, I counted uh, Getacho, nine people 
um, on, on a picture, which it was a very iconic picture back in 2019. And among the, the nine people, Abiy is alone now. So the deputy prime minister is gone, the Mecca Mokondan. Um, the Gaddon Dargacho is gone. Lama is gone. Bakala Garba is gone. Uh, Marara Gudina is down. So uh, Jawar was imprisoned and now he is somehow uh, is not on the political scene. So I, I couldn't find that picture. But if you go back and see that picture between 2019 and now, um, it, 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 it speaks uh, directly into the strategies that are being used. And, and finally, Getachew, I have written an article last year, which is a bit similar in terms of uh, how Abiy has consolidated his power and, uh, and what uh, form of dictator he is, which is for me a charming dictator in the making. And there is a lot in there, and I've used also the different uh, arguments how Abiy has already consolidated his power, power a year ago. Um, so with that, um, I, I could say that the article is somehow helpful uh, in, in the form of a, a constant reminder, but it's not that much revealing. But as you said, again, the fact that even those within um, the PP circle are um, no more believing into the messiah uh, uh, factor anymore tells us that the center could not hold anymore. Not in terms of the, the fact that there would be implosion anytime soon, but the belief itself, the conviction that the member of the PP, um, those in the higher higher echelon, um, are doting um, the leadership and the tra trajectory of um, the, the PP's political direction. Maybe I will um, um, comment on the FANO movement later on, um, what uh, uh, Nati said. Because partly I do not agree on, 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 on the fact that uh, Fano is, the FANOS movement is totally stalled and um, they are losing momentum. Uh, maybe I will get back to that, uh, Getacho. I've already taken a lot of time. Thank you, uh, Morgus, on that. Uh, one of the things that uh, I want to uh, ask each one of you is on how he does this. Uh, the article mentions a number of uh, mechanisms, if you will, one of them being how he reshuffles officials uh, in ministries and um, even in the military very frequently. I mean, I don't think uh, any leader in Ethiopia did that, uh, you know, so frequent and so on. So is there anything that stood out for you or anything that ca caught your attention in how he does that? Because that also has an implication on the scenarios, how how things might unfold uh, in the coming in the coming months. So, uh, talk like anything that stood out for you, the uh, mechanics of his power. Well, I mean, in, in the article, he mentions to, to the two words coercion and corruption. That those are the techniques that Abi used. So, um, for, for people like Brian Nega, for instance. Um, uh, and another interesting word that the, the author uses is deracination. So people, I mean, he takes people from their natural root and he disconnected them. So for instance, Abraham Reagan, he had his own, he, prior to joining, I think for all intents and purposes, we can say PP, um, he had his own base, but because he brought him to the PP, he's disconnected now, he doesn't have a base. Um, so he uses that technique where he, 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 he yanks people from, from their root and they're hated. And because they don't have a base, because they feel so insecure, they have to do everything to 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 handle to life with, with Abi. Um so that is the technique he used with Brahanu, with um with the party leader of the um, Amhara Nationalist Movement, I forgot his name. I think he's a minister, a minister in one of the departments. I don't I don't uh, the, the chubby guy, what was his name? Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so they did that, and he uses intimidation um, as well. He intimidates people um, that if they were to speak out or if they were to do something that Abiy doesn't approve of, um, he would make them pay, even by retaliating against their family, which I think is the reason why even Jawa, when um, uh, he, um, he mentioned the interview that Jawa did, 
but Jawan stood on the fence. I mean, he couldn't come into any point of view because he wasn't sure. He wasn't sure whether he was safe or not safe to say something about Abiy Ahmed. So when he, when the journalist asked Jawan about Abiy Ahmed, Jawan literally he shook. He was so scared to say anything about Abiy Ahmed, and I understand why. The, the reason I think again, I could be wrong. I would be happy to be corrected, but I think the reason. Is because he knows if he were to say something against Abiy Ahmed or something that Abiy Ahmed might not like, um, he is going to do something to his family in Ethiopia. So he uses intimidation, which is why um, very, very notable individuals like uh, Bekele Geba, like Lemma, um, a lot of the people that he had um, that he had ejected from the Prosperity Party don't now say a word. I mean, ordinarily you'd expect. People like you know, like uh, like Lemma, to be outspoken about Abiy Ahmed because let's let's face it, he's he's killing a, you know civilians in Oromia, and that would have been reason enough for them to want to speak out, but they don't. And I understand the reason. It's because of because very ruthless. Because there is no there is no boundary that he wouldn't go to to punish his opponents. So there is that, and I think some people. Because he uses, you know, religious imagery and religious language, and because in Ethiopia, naturally, people have a soft spot for religious language. Um, I think there are a little people who still believe that he, you know, for all the suffering, for all the bloodbath, for all the killings, uh, there is some sunny uplands that Abiy is taking Ethiopia to. I think there are people who truly believe that Abiy is um, the right uh, person. But I think that the main, the main technique he used to. Um, uh, to render some of the political personalities in Ethiopia completely useless um, in that, that deracination technique, where he takes them from their base and completely uh, disconnects them. So that is at the um, elite level. At the base, at the um, grassroots level, he what, it's, it's, um, has created an environment where, um, you know, there is mutual mistrust among all the entities that you could describe as groups of origin, and the Tigranti and the Mahas, they can't sit together and you know and plot against him because they are mutually suspicious of one another. The same applies to the almost and the Somalis and the Afars. Uh, so there is mutual suspicion uh, among everybody in Ethiopia. So I I can't actually see how um, ultimately I'm mean, going to be removed. It's a it's, it's a very very scary thought and thing to say, but I, I really struggle to see how that is going to happen. Thank you, Thala. Uh, uh, Nati, uh, again, f follow up of uh, what you said earlier that there is nothing new. Yes, I remember as well coming to UMD Media, you articulated uh, who he is and uh, how he works. But again, if you were to give a profile of the person, the leader, Abiy Ahmed, again, connecting with uh, what has been, he has been doing since uh, February the 19th. So, you, all of you are alluded to this uh, series of uh, discussions he has had uh, with Amhara region uh, on uh, February 19, continuing with all the regions. You mentioned about Tugrai, the churches, uh, Islamic affairs, and lastly, I think uh, March 22nd, he talk, uh, he spoke with uh, loyal, what he calls um, the loyal high taxpayers connecting all these dots what is your uh, take of how this writer adds to that profile you had about this uh prime minister nati so um let's start with what tekla had to say just a few minutes ago uh one of the strengths even if you hate someone it it's very important to uh recognize their strengths. So one of the strengths of Abiy Ahmed is knowing the people of Ethiopia very well. Uh, and the previous leaders, many of them, including uh, the emperor, they uh, usually stay in their cocoon, in their bubble. They don't study the people. They know uh, some general things, but they don't retail, they don't sell retail politics. 
Abiy Ahmed does. The Ethiopian people, in my opinion, anybody can disagree with me, uh, across the board, Amhara, Tigray, Oromo, or anyone else in that country, there is this fetish, there is this infatuation with strong men, a little bit more than, uh, you know, many people around the world, even Russians, do have uh, infatuation with, with strong men, but more than a little bit more, uh, other people in the world, Ethiopians do love strong men. And in many of his languages, he projects that. And that would make him get away uh, with a lot. One. The second one is he got a handle on a psyche of Ethiopians, particularly when it comes to religion. Uh, if you notice the way he was talking to uh, the, the Orthodox religious leaders and compare it the way he talks to the Islamic religious leaders and compare it the way he was talking to uh, the representatives that came from Tigray. I actually was very bitter about that because there was a priest who was inviting him to Tigray and he was assuring him that he wouldn't encounter any animosity in Tigray. I don't believe that priest was uh, was not sincere. He was sincere when he said that, but he said that in response when, when the response that he got to that is, "Hey, I wanted to come. I was just told to stay." Even with that moment, he was. Gedachu Radha was sitting right next to him. In that very moment, he was splitting the guy who he, who invited him to Tigray and Gedachu Radha, who's supposed to be the leader of that person. So he's very much masterful of these kinds of things. He understood the psyche of the people. He's not using it in a productive manner, but he does know the people. Uh, that helps him to communicate better. And because of that, this may prolong a little bit uh, his, uh, his power, the longevity of his power, but it might not work all the time. And we're, we're seeing it because a lot of people now are realizing that they uh, have been duped. It might took them some time, might have taken them uh, some time, but they might have been duped. But it doesn't materialize right away. It takes time to manifest, uh, you know, to 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 get a result of uh, confronting him, probably ushering him out of office, but you know, becoming a reason to usher him out of office. Now, these discussions, I'm more interested. Why are they being held right now? What is the message that he's trying to convey? In my opinion, the message that he's trying to convey through this discussion is I'm in control. I can respond to your concerns in a manner that you want me to respond. You know, I just, he wanted to convey a message that he cares about the problems that people, uh, uh, that he thinks people care about. And he, this is also a projection of power. This is also saying that the guy, uh, you know, even you, you read it in the article, he has this um, imperial ambition. He has this, um, what do you call uh, the uh, Messiah complex? Uh, so he's he's projecting that when he talks to uh, people, he he's he's projecting that, but he addresses different group of people, different group of representatives, in almost a masterful way to fit their their concerns. Right? Uh, I, I gave you two examples, and let me give you a third one. When he was talking to 
uh, taxpayers, rich people, he was telling them that why do you pay bribes? You know, if you don't pay, if you pay bribe, bribe once, there is, you know, much more likely you will be asked for another one. So when you say no, you know, it, you, you're not going to be, uh, it's more likely you're not going to be asked uh, for another one. When he said that, he knows for sure, 110%, he knows that's impossible. He knows that it's almost impossible to uh, do business in Ethiopia without pay, paying bribe. But he's conveying a message. He's conveying a, me a message that, look, I am even telling the people who are paying the bribes that it's your fault for this problem to be spread. That will buy him some sympathy from the people who say that, you know what, he's trying. Not only from the people who used to have softer heart for him before, but people who used to hate him would take this as, you know, he's trying. Yeah, he's an asshole, but, you know, he's still trying. I'm sorry for, uh, for saying that, but I, I know a lot of people who are saying that. I know a lot of people who used to very much object, uh, you know, objected to everything that he had to say, uh, softening their stance because of the, 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 the little bits of messages that he's conveying. So, again, let me get back to just uh, for 30 seconds, let me get back to the article that's been written. It did write about that. It did write this technique. It, it warned about this technique. It would have been very much helpful if it was written some time ago. There were a lot of people who have not gotten any credit, who left PP and have really did ring the warning bell for a very long time. I can I can uh, tell you one, Unatu Blata, who is in Canada right now, who used to be an ambassador, who used to be a major PP guy. He left very early and he's been warning about this for a very, very, very long time. Now, this guy who's written this article, he wrote it anonymously. Unatu Blata did not do that. When he left, when he left his position, he was you know, he was an ambassador. He just left his position and said that this is this is just unsustainable. When he did that, nobody has given him credit. Nobody even knew who he, who he was. So this is a very good thing. I'm not knocking it down, honestly. I'm glad that he did, this person did this. Uh, it, it should be used as a reference, his article as a reference, but... I am more, much more interested how this should be uh, prevented starting from now or how we can make this problem whittled down without chaos being, uh, being spread in, into the country. Thank you. Thank you, Nati, uh, for that. Uh, Mogus, a, a new article from last year, the one uh, we were uh, displaying on the screen, you talk about a number of uh, characteristic uh, features of the Abiy Ahmed in terms of cult, in terms of uh, his playbook, and so on. This is uh, almost one year old article, but comparing to what we are hearing or what we are reading from this uh, insider's article on Horn Horizon. Do, do you see uh, any change in that in terms of the cult and in terms of uh, specifically you know, when he calls all these groups to his palace, the first thing everyone does is, as you saw, praising his projects because a day or two earlier to these discussions, he, you know, gives them this guided tour to uh, his uh, projects in Addis. So is this a way of getting back to that uh, euphoria uh, that he was uh, referring to? How, how do you read? You are comparing and contrasting the people who, are, who took picture with him few years ago and nobody is around him now and so on. How, how, how do you read 
what may be even unfolding in the coming uh, few months, Morgus. Um, thank you, Getacho, again. Um, um, Nati and Netakulai has uh, already touched up on so many uh, uh, important issues. So uh, I would like to um, focus only on those issues, maybe which either strengthen what they have said, or maybe um, getting back to the article I wrote a year ago. It seems to me that um, that article, which is actually an extended uh, version, which is nine pages, um, I have I, I took my time. Um, I had to review what Abi um, had been doing for for the last four years. I mean, counting from last year June because I wrote this piece last year in June on fifteenth of June. <clears throat> so mainly I focused on three major um, patterns. One being that 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 cult cult building, um, which helped him um, uh, to lure and dupe so many people until this very day, including um, this preaching. Uh, I, I do not say this is not um, a dialogue forum. He was, he was just preaching. In that article, actually, I said, um, I'm, everybody can read it on page four, Abiy preached to everyone and everywhere. And the Ethiopian people are his congregates. That is how I explained. So all these people are Abiy's congregate. And so if I can explain what I wrote in that article in, nut in a nutshell, there were three major strategies or patterns. One is a performative populism. So it is a different form, a modern day of populism, where you have to perform to different audiences on a in, on a rather petty matters, it, it could seem for an for 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 an an unsuspicious an unsuspicious mind that he is engaging in um, in a usual rhetoric and very very trivial matters, but that is not the case. Most leaders, most notably Abi, is a, is a master when it comes to manipulating and exploiting the fault lines and the. Uh, social political fabrics of the Ethiopian people, which Nati has touched upon. So one is performative uh, populism, which Abi has taken it to the next level in, in, in those uh, preaching sessions that we saw, on those nine preaching sessions. The other one is actually, I said, um, he uh, effectively captured institutions. When there is none, he even creates a new institutions, such as commissions and the committees, and then get rid of them and proliferating them as, as, it, as need be. And the third one is, I said, Abi uses a smart repression. So that could fall, um, we can draw a contrast or a parallel between my article and, and the article we are discussing, because the guy said intimidation, and I said uh, digital smart reputation, um, repression, including using uh, Trump Act charges, um, uh, intimidating people, um, and of course, using other tactics as well. Get at you. So, so much so about my article and about the comparison. And it seems that as if, if I have to write it today, maybe I will use one or, or, or two uh, examples from what has been happening, especially um, in the northern part of Ethiopia, including the war in, 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 in Amhara. But then, um, if I had to add Get at you on, on this article, he just uh, focused on two mechanisms or, or strategies, which is uh, co-option and intimidation. But I would rather say I will use three major strategies of repression. One, he used co-option, but even when he used co-option, unlike what the other author said, he cut them loose once they lost, once they lost their constituency. You see the president uh, of, of the, the Supreme Court and all other notable people. So Abi has no um, problem to get rid of them. So cutting them loose is also part of option. Once um, he uses them and he is quite sure that um, they no longer have their own constituency. So the first one is co-option getacho. The second one I call it intermediary measures. Intermediary, which is Intimidation, actually personal intimidation and, 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 and revenge against your own family. And, and, and Takla is so right about that, including maybe other people, including George, that the intimidation, the 
the old guards used were um, the, uh, the, the known um, playbooks. For example, if we take the EPRDF, we know that. So it is, it is old um, tactics of dictators. But Abi comes after your family, your family, friend, and everything. So no one is spared. So the second one is intimidation and imprisonment. These are intermediary for me. But then there is a third one which should have been included in this article, a very important. When uh, push comes to shove, Abi, Abi engaged in outright war as well as we saw it in Tigray, in Amara, in Noromia. So that is the third measure. That's why I'm saying between co-option and outright um, war, there are intermediaries which are intimidation, imprisonment, and exile. Get at you. So imprisonment, intimidation, and exile are the intermediaries. The extreme uh, level is, uh, of course, out, outright uh, show of force or war. And the first option is, of course, an option using uh, different incentive mechanisms. And going forward, I am quite worried that um, just um, to end on, on, on Nati's uh, previous note, I am so concerned that much of the Ethiopian people are not even waking up today. That is very concerning for me. And after um, after manipulating all these people, and the reason Abi is showing them those mega projects, it was deliberate, and it is because of the um, um, uh, the, the uh, psychology of the mass. Our mind focuses on, on 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 the immediate factors by forgetting all the sufferings, maybe the diseases, those people uh, whom the corpus they saw while coming to Addis. They forget that and they just for, focus on uh, uh, those grandois, shiny projectors, white projectors. And I think it is serving him very well. Um, with that, um, I would like to end. And um, looking forward, the only solution would be to wake up, to know the guy better, and to have some, some coordination probably um, among the uh, loose networks which we, ha we already have. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Morgus. And uh, we want to, uh, I just want to finish by asking you, uh, of course, your final thoughts, but also uh, going back to the same article, which of the four, arti uh, four scenarios he painted for us in that article uh, do you think would be the one that uh, most probably will happen uh, as we see the future of Ethiopia? Uh, you can add your own scenario, but uh, if you want to be limited with what he's saying in this article, which one would be the dominating one, if you will, uh, and your uh, parting thoughts as well? That line. Yeah, if I could, um, if I could pick up Mogus um, uh, on, on a couple of points, is because it's the, the article that you you wrote, Mogus, I, I I remember reading it, and one of the one of the issues of again not to pick a fight with it now but um, that is for another time um you describe abby as a charming and it's not just you a lot of people describe abby as, as, as charming and it, i have always wondered what it is that people find um charming I, again not to not to get past that but i find abby insufferable in every uh, imaginable way i, I can't even stand in fact for, for one minute so i'm not i understand when for instance people say that you know donald trump for all his fables at least is Charming, I, I, I get that because he, he makes you laugh if, if you are a silly person. But uh, when people describe Abi in that in that language, it's, it's, it's again it's a silly point. But uh, I just wanted to 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 put that to to, to Mogus. And I think the, the other thing in terms of the in terms of the sermons, I think that Abi has been having with the people that he called representatives uh, from Tigray, from Amhara, from Oromia, from um, religious communities, from taxpayers. Um, I, I think you, one one thing that you you can't fail to see is Abiy is truly baffled as to why people don't see what he thinks he's doing. So the first point that he he, he tells them is that now we have seen all the projectors and everything. Now we know you trust is to go back home and tell the people what you have seen. And when he makes that point, he's genuinely um, baffled as to why people don't really understand him. So there is there is a, a degree of delusion in how he uh, thinks people should understand him, and he truly believes that he has been 
lived down by people because people don't again in his, in his understanding people don't understand him so he's trying to pe to make people see that he's doing the right things but he thinks that the way to bring or, or to, to check Ethiopia um, um, forward is by by you know by erecting this grandiose project that Zodu just mentioned and and I think I don't remember where it was, but he, I remember him saying that only people could do what he was doing. So, you know, building projectors, helping their neighbors, cleaning their neighbors, only if everybody did that, then it will transform. That is how he understands uh, politics. So it, it doesn't occur to him that the reason why he's capable of, you know, building projects in Addis Ababa is because he's in charge of the financial resources of the country and the other people don't have that that um that access to the finance of the country and that people couldn't do what he does around his um uh, residence but he doesn't understand that he believed that people could if they have the right initiative if they have the energy uh, people could go around and and make stuff that is what he uh, believes so there is an underlying philosophy in terms of what why it is that he's um assembling people and telling them um what to do now about the, the scenarios um, I think that the Hedemarian option, like I said before, is something that we could, I think, rule out because uh, Abi simply lacked the humility. Because for all his deficiencies, Hedemarian Basali was a proper um, human being. He understood that he was limited. He understood that um, uh, prime ministership was beyond his pay grade, and that the reason why he 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 resigned, and it wasn't. It wasn't something that was a blasphemous thing to do for, for him to resign, but I wish he wouldn't do that because I really believe that he is a good send to transform Ethiopia. And he did believe that he has made reference to, to, to that a, a number of times. So I don't see uh, that happening. Um, ethnic strife, actually, on the contrary, I believe that there's, go it's going, to be, there's going to be more ethnic harmony now. In terms of the, the the ordinary people, because more and more people are waking up to the fact that he has defrauded them, and more and more people are understanding it. More people in Amhara now understand that what they were made to believe about Tigray was completely wrong, and actually more Amhara are now more likely to be sympathetic to the Tigrayan suffering, and more Tigrayans are um, more likely to be sympathetic to what is happening in in Amhara, and I observed that on 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 social media and. You know, the, the tension, the mutual suspicion between normal people is dissipating. So I don't see any possibility for an ethnic um, strife. I think the more likely, for me, the more likely um, eventuality is for people within the, the party to, to revolt at some point when, you know, when there, is no, when there is no more good reason to stay in the party, when people become so desperate because they could feel the pressure that was coming from people. I mean, they can't be having easy life, the people around Abiyi now, the um, Brahman and the Gas and the other people around him, they must be feeling that the pressure at, at some point, they might, you know, they might, they might run out of other options, but to, to write that to, to him, uh, that, that seems to me to be the more uh, plausible um, scenario. Thank you, Tarlai. Uh, same question, uh, Nati, uh, your parting thoughts and uh, which scenarios out of these four, or if you have any scenarios that you think could uh, likely be uh, happening in Ethiopia. Thank you. Uh, the, the first one, uh, consolidating power, uh, that is already is happening, but it's it's been happening for the last four years, but it's happening right now. Uh, in a much more vigorous manner. Uh, that is largely because of that in my, uh, uh, it, that's largely because in my opinion uh, that he's getting a lot of help to consolidate his power. If you ask me from who, usually uh, we can point our fingers to uh, Washington, London, Brussels, and New York. Uh, there is a reason for that. And I, I would like to speak uh, to that a little bit. They want him to stay in power, not because they liked him, 
uh, it's because they think that or they're being told by him again in a very masterful ma uh, masterful manner that he's the only one who will be keeping Ethiopia uh, together and they want Ethiopia together for a myriad of reasons. Uh, if you remember, uh, Getacho, when I came to UMD Media, my first or second appearance, I told you that the only saving grace, it was just at the height of the Tigray War, war the only saving grace was uh, that the, you know, the foreigners, the, the powers to be in uh, this corridors of power in, in these cities, in, in London and Washington, New York and Brussels, they want Ethiopia together. And that's the only grace that would keep, uh, you know, Ethiopia from disintegrating and falling apart. It's not because the people would want to live together. When one declares one on another, nobody wants to live together in, in, in that kind of situation. But the only reason why the country stayed together and will stay together is not because Ethiopians wanted it, but because, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the people who, in my opinion, uh, manages uh, affairs in Aratikilo wanted it. So he, he does continue to consolidate his power, in my opinion. Uh, and secondly, the Northern Alliance uh, between Tigray and Ethiopia, uh, <laughs> between Tigray and, and Amhara and other Northern people, including Afar, uh, it will come to fruition, fruition because it's been happening right now, as Teklai said, that a lot of people uh, in Amhara are becoming very much sympathetic uh, to what the people of Tigray have gone through. You know, I, I know this very well because the people who have alienated me, condemned me and didn't want to speak to me, uh, didn't want to claim me right now, they really uh, would like to claim me this time, this time around. Uh, that's a very small uh, poll sample, but still uh it, it does tell me something but it, it also does make sense there are a lot of people who thought that uh who did buy into uh the propaganda that the their their enemy not the Tigray elites not the tplf but the people itself i know uh, some people who did buy into that and regret it regret it very much the problem with that is First of all, the Amhara elites are extraordinarily divided. And many of them uh, do not have a political outlook, a political view of 21st century. They're stuck in 18th century. They're still, uh, if you listen to their rhetoric, uh, they sound like uh, a warlord from 1811. Zamanama So it's it's really difficult for uh Tigray elites, as I understand many of them, as I not not as I understand, but as I know very well, many of them are politically astute. They have their own problem, I'm, I'll come to that, but they're very much politically astute. They understand uh the you know the world that we're living in right now, and it's really difficult for them to communicate to the level, to that level of, uh, I don't, I wouldn't even call it political naivete. I would call it just, uh, uh, the, 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 you know, the Amhara people, it's very, very unfortunate. They don't have political leadership. I, I don't see, they don't have uh, a group of elites who, who force a kind of ideology, a kind of roadmap that would lead to reconciliation to uh with with not only with Tigray elite but with 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 the rest of the country they missed a big chance when they pushed away people like Lida who would have brought them to uh to this century to be honest with you to to you know a, a political uh 
uh, dialogue, a political circle of the century. That because of that, uh, that alliance probably will teeter. But I, I do believe that it is coming because it, it's it's just natural for people who speak the same language, who have the same uh, you know religion, almost everything. It's it's uh, very much inevitable. Uh, escalating ethnic strife in Ethiopia. Yeah, he does that. He's been doing that. He's doing that now, and he will continue to do that uh, as long as it you know it. Uh, it benefits him, but I don't think we should consider. Um, uh, we should focus only on him. It's not only him who's doing this. There are a group of people that are surrounding him who are doing this. Uh, Mogus a little while ago has has mentioned that uh, the the president of Oromia region, Shumelu Sabdisa, was saying that I, I've, I've read that, too. I don't know how far it is true. I just, I very much doubt the source, but if it is true, and I wouldn't doubt that he would say anything crazy like that, but he was saying that we're coming back. We're we're claiming what's been taken away from us hundred something years ago. So it's just not only Abi Ahmed, but there are a large number of people who would push this kind of agenda around him that would create ethnic strife in the country and that would continue. All right, and, and uh, in fact, at times, for not because he's a good person, but because for his own survival, I do believe that it is Abi Ahmed that is taming them down when they uh, say these crazy things uh, uh, repeatedly. But he he does also uh, uh, incite some strife when it suits him. Revolt uh, within the ruling party, that's something that's coming uh, for a lot of reasons. And the first one is that exactly what it, what's been mentioned in, in the article, the money is going to run out. So you can't sustain this kind of stuff. That's what happened in Sudan. So the uh, Al Burhan used to just control people exactly like Al Bashir used to. You know, giving them cars, giving them cars, uh, giving them cars, giving them houses, giving them a lot of uh, things that that just <laughs> not just their salary, but. Uh, things that the rest of the, the, the population wouldn't wouldn't get, but it just it, that couldn't sustain. That couldn't be sustained. So the country fell apart. So if uh, you know the the revolt within the party, I don't believe that it comes from conviction or ideology. It comes from losing these perks, and they will lose these perks eventually. So that that definitely will happen, and when that happens, it will be bad. It will be bad for the country because the party is not structured as an institution. It's structured as just one person's uh, group. It, it, it doesn't hold conventions every year. It doesn't hold, uh, it doesn't have uh, what, what do you call chain of command. It doesn't have a, 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 a political a character of political party. So uh, those people who have held that one man's party, when they start to just stop holding it, it will crumble when it, when it crumbles because it's the only one that has a a, a capacity to, to hold every part of the country at least afloat for now. When it crumbles, the country crumbles. So we need to be very careful about that. We don't need to be like Sudan. We don't need to be like... Uh, 
uh, Yemen, we don't need to be like uh, Somalia used to be. So the, the revolt within the ruling party, I do believe that that scenario is a very scary scenario. It needs to be managed very carefully. Uh, having said that, this is what I would say. The solution, in my opinion, would be to have a unified uh, and methodical opposition. We need to be abandoning the politics of the 60s, the politics of the 70s that we have learned so much about, that cares about only a certain group of people, only a certain group of ethnic group, because in Ethiopia right now, when one falls, the other one also will fall. So the politics of revenge, the politics of caring only for the one that you came from, for, for an ethnic group or a, a, a village or an area that you came from, first of all, it's a very much outdated uh, politics because one of the reasons why, this I know very well because I have been told directly from them, one of the reasons why State Department or people in Brussels or people in New York stop listening oppositions is when it when when those people start representing not the country but a certain ethnic group. They just shut the conversation down. They say that you know what, you're a secessionist. They get to be labeled so easily, even if they're not. TPLF has never been a secessionist. Never. But it, it wanted to play a little bit, you know, to, to the, the uh, extremist and secessionist wing. And it just started to throw red meat to them. They saw that. And, and, and part of the reason why they abandoned it is because of that. And I know that this has been conveyed by Mike Hammer to a lot of TPLF leaders that to tone down the rhetoric of, of uh, you know, at least to play up, to, to, uh, to speak for the country. I think we need to be smart on that front. I think activists and, and, and political opposition and ruling political leaders in Tigray, in Oromia, in Amhara, everywhere, they need to stop talking about their region and start talking about the country so they will be able to be listened to. Because for a lot of reasons, now, if you great many of us have been, yeah, uh, I'm about to, many of us have been uh, learned that the country is strategically very important. They want it to be, uh, Together, they also are very much afraid of refugees crossing to them out of 120 million people. They want it to be together because of that. They just don't want um, anything and anybody that will create uh, chaos. And uh, so all these scenarios to me um, are very much valid. Thank you. So all of the above is your answer. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Nati. And Mogus, uh, briefly, uh, again, uh, your take on the scenarios and if there is an additional scenario. While you get ready for that, I just want to tell uh, our audience that we will talk about the same article, but uh, in, uh, together with uh, Diderto Ayale's recent uh, extended article about peace struggle in Ethiopia. So I'll be speaking to Diderto uh, Anane Asori and Tespakiro Sahela. Uh, on uh, the same kind of same subject, but in an extended matter in Amharic tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So stay tuned uh, to UMD Media as we talk, uh, discuss with uh, Dr. Ayado and Anasori and Despakiro Saleh. Mogus, the final word is yours. All right. Um, with that privilege, I hope I would not be one of those priests who are going to say the final word. Um, I'm saying I'm not one of those Abiyis priests. Um, yeah, so speaking about those 
scenarios, those four scenarios. Um, there is, uh, to start with, there are the fifth scenario, which uh, uh, many people usually in, in, in private are talking or about or uh, um, contemplating, which is, it could partly fall under scenario number four, which is um, um, a potential coup, potential coup data by, by the military. Because some people are saying that even, I heard that from the high ranking uh, um, officials from the PP, at least from two of them. So we might say that revolt within the ruling party and or um, a coup d'etat. I'm not saying it is plausible, but I'm just saying what people are contemplating. So it could be either on scenario number four, or it could be an independent scenario for me, which is less likely uh, given the, um, uh, the Ethiopian culture. Coup d'etat has never been successful um, since we established the current um, system at least for the last 32 plus years. Um, so I, I will come to the plausibility, but I just started with that since you get that you asked me if there is a possible number five or six. Um, yes, I, I, I think um, there are something into all the, um, the, the, the four scenarios, um, but I could say the most likely, all of them are possible and plausible, but the number one is most likely still for me. It's not because Abi is um, um, is extremely smart and is playing the game very well. Of course, partly is playing it very well, as we have discussed in terms of what uh, what he has been capable of in terms of manipulating the uh, Ethiopian psychology, the, the, the psyche of the Ethiopian people, and the fault lines. But because the opposition is deeply divided, because they hate each other more than they hate the regime, that's very important. And that's very relevant for scenario number two as well. So I would say Abi is going to uh, consolidate his power uh, in the near future, possibly in a year or so. Um, that's my take on uh, scenario number one, and it's even more likely as well at the same time. Uh, on scenario two, Northern Alliance, the possibility of uh, the Northern Alliance to emerge or a re renewed conflict integrate. Nobody uh, reflected on that, by the way. In scenario two, there are two scenarios, actually. Either a possibility of a uh, new alliance to emerge, a northern alliance, or um, the possibility of renewed conflict in Tigray. So maybe um, um, Taklai or others can also reflect on that. But for me, um, I do not speak for or on behalf of the FANU group, but um, I, I take what uh, Nati said with a pinch of salt in a sense that. Some of the FANO group, yes, they, they, they lack, manifestly lack leadership, especially centralized uh, leadership. That uh, goes without saying. But some of them are very progressive because we can see the change of rhetoric as compared to last year. If we see the Shalaka group and all other disgruntled group, they were very much um, um, not coordinated, disoriented, and they're spewing some heads and um, uh, even saying that, see you in a rat kilo in two weeks or, 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 or about in a month. And then there are rhetorics and narratives and prejudice against other people, which actually awakened the sleeping line from, from other ethnic group. But um, some, if I say even most of them are being progressive, or at least they are coming to grip with the reality now, the politics in Ethiopia. So that's what I wanted to just add. And of course, I would be happy, and I've been saying that for the last three years, actually now, there is a need for people-to-people -people relationship, at least as, as a beginner between Amara and Tigray people. I was preaching about that. Uh, one of my program actually is entitled The, um, the Scar of War and the Wound of Peace. That's what I did in December 2021, right in the midst of the war. And even so, to counterbalance what is happening in Addis, we need a strong force Possibly the, the alliance of the, North, the, the northern uh, people, uh, the, the, the people from the northern part of Ethiopia, for both pragmatic and ethical reasons, we need that. But as to the possibility, as they say, um, it takes two to, to tango. So it's not only if, um, the, uh, the, the Amara elites who, are, who lacks uh, foresight, uh, myopic at, at, at times, but also I, all, I do not see that. The, the, that the Tigrans are speaking with a unified 
language in terms of uh, the unity. If I'm wrong, I would be corrected. But beyond that, I see three major sticking points that they need to overcome, the Amhara and the Tigrayans. One, the issue of contested territory has to be resolved in their own terms. Two, there is a wound of peace, I mean the result of the war, that there needs to be some kind of societal reconciliation or at least um, the elites from both um, sides of the Atlantic has to talk to each other about that, to assuage that, which is somehow happening, as Nati said. And the third thing is there needs to be a shift or at least creation of fabrication of new narratives. You know, one of the uh, concerns of the Amara people, we have to put ourselves in their shoes. They are saying that the TPLF is uh, anti-Amara, and the rhetoric is anti-Amara, the constitution is anti-Amara. So they need to change the rhetoric. You remember what happened in 2017-18, the Oro Mara. They just, with, with, with snap of fingers, they changed it that from the, the Oro Mara um, enemies, mortal enemies, to uh, the Oro Mara darling. So a change of narrative is very important. So these three things need to be overcome if we need to see the Northern Ireland, which I wish to see in terms of um, wishing it to see. The third one is, I do not discount the escalation of um, um, ethnic civil war, actually. If you remember, if you notice, the moment the Fano is mentioning that they are going to add this, you would see even those who are opposing Prime Minister Abi, the Oromo group, they are saying, well, the road to Arakilo is through our neighborhood and you are not going to go there. And always, whenever there is a conflict in the border or the Fano group, are mentioning that they are heading toward this, you see that um, the resurgence of that animosity. And Abi is capable of that. And actually, Getaicho, I just wanted to reiterate this. And I wrote this four years ago, three years ago. And it was in Amharic, but I say it in English. So the translation would be what the TPLF have not been able to achieve in 27 years. Abi broke the record in 27 months in terms of dividing, in terms of using the fault lines. The Ethiopian people has never been divided in their entire history. Even the TPLF, the most hated um, political party, has never been able to divide the people. When I say the most hated, I'm saying from the, the other perspective. Those people who are saying the TPLF have been divided, dividing us. And I would say, Abi has broke that record in less than 27 months. So it didn't took him 27 years or, or, or so. So I see scenario number three would be on my... Uh, well, number two, um, as to the implosion within the party, that is less likely. Abiy is Abi you would stay on power and die rather than letting um, that to happen for me. So there won't be any um, willful res resignation from 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 his point of view. Uh, a military coup is also less likely. So I would I would say get that further consolidation, and number three would be number two, which is um, ethnic escalation. Um, the uh, emergence of alliance. If those things I mentioned could be overcome, yes, I could say that would be number two. But as things stand, um, I would put number two in number three and number four would stay in number four. Um, the, the way out would be, as I said, IBE's strength is in um, manipulating the fault lines. So you have to slip it around uh, in a sense that um, there should be uh, an alliance, or at, at least I will repeat, a loose alliance among people. And the best way to start that is from the Tigrans and Amara elites. And if, if, if they do that, I think there will be a hope for, for the Ethiopian politics. Can I, can I say a few words, Gitacho, if, if you don't mind, before you? Sure, take it. Yeah, just one minute. Yeah, I think uh, about them, um, um, not to mention the, the, and and uh, so ethnic strife. I'm, I'm not particularly worried about ethnic strife because I, I think the environment for, for that is fast diminishing. And just imagine, for instance, if what um, Shimel said today about the need to to to, uh, to control Al-Saba and bring about demographic change and all that. But I think that that is the spirit of what he said today. If that had been said, for instance, five um, years ago. It would have caused a huge uproar among the Amharas and the Tigran. They would have said, you know, they're coming to, to, to evict us, to take our land and all that. But now nobody really pays attention to what they say because they have been found out. That people know that he just um, is it, really 
um, he's saying that to appease um, his his, his um, automobile without really having any conviction conviction or that. So I think the the environment for ethnic strife is fast um, disappearing. That's what I think. Again, I, I, I'm predicting the future is a fool's errand, as they say. And um, you know, it could, I, I think what was um, raised a very good point. If if Pano was to advance to Addis Saba, that would be a recipe for for, um, for disaster in terms of ethnic um, strife. But, I don't think FAMU is strong enough and organized enough to, to load that sort of um, mark towards this. I think it's a very haphazard organization. I think they will make the Amhara region very ungovernable, but that would be the, the limit of, of, of FAMU because there is no central authority that would pull the whole FAMU movement in one direction. Um, so I, I just wanted to, to add that point. When I say I'm not worried about ethnic strife, I'm also looking into whether or not the environment for that exists in Ethiopia, and I think it's 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 not quite there. Um, so that that would be something over which I would lose sleep. Well, if 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 I would just um, as someone who is close to the sources, especially for those people, um, I mean, from as someone who can read the rhetoric and listen to what is said in a panorama and and, and other um, uh, generally rhetorics. I can tell you that a lot of people who are even the opposition, a mortal opposition of Abi, you would turn around the things and instead of seeing that our power is gone or compromised, we would rather um, fight uh, a good fight. And I, I am hearing that from those people who are very um, notable people and deep inside that is still is still there. And, and, and by the way, I agree with you, Takali, that you are 100% right, Fano is not even capable to, 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 uh, to take over the Amara region, let alone heading to, to, to the capital. You are true. Uh, you are right on that. But what is the way? How could you um, bring change without heading to Addis? There should be either you have to physically go there or ideologically reach to Addis. So either way, there must be a march towards Addis. I, I, I think that is very necessary. Oh, oh yeah, again, not to make it too and from. I, I think they will try. I will try to go to Addis. I'm not convinced about their um, organizational um, structure to be able to do, go all the way to, to Addis. I, I, I'm not just sure about that, but again, we, we'll wait and see. I, I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that as to the capability. So we, we agree on that. Let's, let's see. But even for the Northern Network, still you need to march to Addis to change the, <laughs> the political dynamics. But, so. Yeah. In one way or another, there must be um, a coalition which is going to topple Abi, and to topple Abi, you have to get Abi in in, in Aratkil or not in Makale or, or in Bar. Okay, great, uh, gentlemen. I know uh, we have run uh, over our one hour limit, but uh, it's an interesting and insightful discussion, and I'm um, get, getting the feedback from our audience as well. The hope is that uh, we will. Uh, continue to have this kind of discussions where uh, civilians don't get, uh, you know, continue to get killed while Arakilo does uh, what it has been doing since the last, uh, I think in April he will be his, uh, he will uh, have his uh, sixth uh, year anniversary. And tomorrow, as I said, we'll continue this discussion in Amharic uh, based on the same paper, the same article together with the uh, long article, uh, 27 pages written by a uh, politician, Lidetu uh, Ayale. Uh, so I will be joined by Lidetu, Anania Sori, and Tasfa Kiro Sahlet tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Mogus, Nati, and Taklai, uh, thank you so much. And special thanks to Mogus and Taklai who are doing this after midnight uh, local time. Nati, hope uh, this will not be your only H panel appearance. Uh, good night from here. Good to see everybody. I'm, I'm glad yeah, to, good see to see you, you especially to these two, two, two gentlemen. It's my first time to but, see you. Uh, like I had disappeared it, from, from Twitter. So oh, yeah, that was the last we, uh, we had our moments on Twitter, didn't we? I tend to go around and make fines. It's a problem that I have. But that, that's okay. that's okay, but that was the largest platform that you had, and you should not have abandoned it. 
and your your voice is very important. It's very much needed. So I'm so glad to see you. We'll, 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 we'll take that backstage uh, and we'll be signing yeah. off. Oh, oh, no, I thought you were not streaming. Are you streaming still? Yes, we are yeah, of course. live. Oh, no, I thought, I, yeah, okay. Okay. All right, it was a yes, pleasure uh, to see you guys. Okay. All right, bye-bye. Okay, bye -bye. have a good one. And uh, please uh, share, subscribe, like, uh, so that YouTube can also share to many of our viewers. Uh, good night. Your host was Geta Bye-bye.